folks, welcome back to Bill's Garage. Um, thank you for all the comments recently and for the extra subscribers. It's pushing a thousand now, which is quite monumental, really, considering I started off doing this just one year ago. Um, I just want to do a quick video vlog today. I haven't got time to do anything on the trailer project because um, I've hit a bit of a wall with that at the minute. I don't know why I've got several directions I want to go in and I just want to think about it for a minute. I'm not working this week, got a week's hardly been doing various things, catching up. The garden with this rain has just been having issues with growth like you wouldn't believe, so I've been ripping it apart with a strimmer and lots of other things that, that have been taking up the time. So uh, the trailer project is just going to get stuck back into Monday. We've got a busy weekend, Monday, back into it, and we're going to make some serious progress in the next, what, Monday and Tuesday. We shall have that moving forward nicely. Uh, this video log really was about a question that I've been asked three times now and I like to make a short video if I keep getting asked the same question because you can answer it in a little bit of type but it doesn't really do the same thing. Um, this question is about slowing down the tick over on a Harley Davidson. Several people ask how do I adjust the tick over on my new Harley. Now those of us who know Harleys, those of us who ride bikes and ridden for years, it's very easy for us, I keep saying this, it's very easy for us to say well, you know, that's easy and you should know that but no there are many new riders thankfully coming into Harley ownership and motorcycle ownership in general and the new breed of motorcyclist is buying the new breed of bikes and the new breed of bikes are very much plug and play meaning they're just as they are you buy them you ride them you take them back for service and then you sell them on that's kind of it there isn't much to do but there is still the desire in a Harley owner to modify the bike to make it different and to make it their own and to make it the only one like it and that's very special very important as it should be um, so fitting accessories, are, I get a lot of questions from people fitting accessories. When I set out to make my videos, I didn't really set out to be some person who asks us questions or some person who teaches everyone anything. I really didn't. I just wanted to show you what I do and this is how I do it. Same as everybody else does, but I get asked a lot of questions. And it would appear that when I answer them as best I can, uh, people appreciate it and they learn from it. And more importantly, they're saving money. A chap just the other day said that changing the grips... On his Harley Davidson was going to cost him $70 at the dealership. Jesus, really? $70 in America, you know, in US money. Oh, it staggers me. It's not a difficult job. You can do it if you read the manual. If you get the big blue Harley manual, it's all in there. They're about £60, about $100 to buy. When you bought one, it's all in there. It's about three inches thick, and you just need to find it. It isn't hard. You can find all this out for yourself. Uh, but this business keeps popping up and I wanted to do a video about this tick over adjustment thing because I think it's a very important issue and I want to make a very important warning about this so that people don't make a silly mistake. Now Harley Davidsons of today, they may look like the Harley Davidsons of yesteryear such as knuckleheads, shellheads, panheads and so on but they really are not. They have no more in common than a sailing ship to a powerboat, they really don't. You know, they're, they're a very different animal. Um, what people like to, to do, what people want, um, you can do it with carburetted bikes, but you can't do it with the new fuel injection bikes, and that is adjust the tick over on the bike. You buy a new Sportster, and it's generally Sportster owners who are buying into the new Bobbers, 48s, 1200s, um, the, the new Bobber Street Style 48s that are coming, this Brat Style thing that Harley are picking up. Manufacturers always pick up on what we want and what we like. So... They're producing these bikes and people are buying them, especially the 48 as a model. I love the 48. I think it's a fabulous looking bike. But as a bike, it's a misnomer. It's supposed to be a bobber, but a sportster, and I hate doing rabbit ears, but sportster can't ever be a bobber. A bobber is meant to be, let's go back to the 50s, a bobber is meant to be a big old glide, a big old electric glide, uh, perhaps an ex-police bike or an ex-war department bike. I think traditionally... They were ex-war department WLs, which was the old flathead Harleys of the 40s. And uh, I think demobbed uh, US uh, servicemen bought them and brought them home. And when they rode them around the farm, the family farm, this is an old legendary story. The, the, the fenders got loaded up with mud, so they cut the fenders off. They put different bars on. They made them lighter so that they could steer them and, and handle. And that's how the bobber was originally born. So, of course, nowadays, it's 2012, the dealer's making them which in some respects is a kind of contradiction, but that's, that's how life is. And we buy these things and people want them to sound like the old chuggler, bobbly bob, you know, potato, potato, slow ticking over tractor of days gone by. 
but these bikes are based around a Sportster. So if we go back to 1957, the Sportster was created to compete against the British competition at the time, which is the Triumphs and Nortons and BSAs and the bikes that, they loved, that were lighter and faster and, and handled better and so on, and all Holly had to offer was a big old panhead. And it was just a lorry, a truck by comparison. So they made the Sportster light, easy to handle, but now look what's happened. They're now going full, full circle and they're turning these Sportsters, the manufacturer themselves is turning this Sportster into what the Sportster was designed to replace. <sighs> Go figure. But anyway, that's what's happening. And the new rider, the, the guy coming into bike, the girl coming into biking, and I had three requests from, from girls. One of, the quest, one of the three people who's asked this question about slowing down the takeover is a girl, and she said to me, I really want it to stick over slower. I want that potato, potato, potato that you get on a big old twin. Two things. Firstly, those old bikes that tick over, they're big twins. They're the 1200s, the 1340s, and bigger, and they will loll up along slower. They have a bigger, heavier flywheel. It, it smoothly just rumbles round like a big old dump truck engine, and that's where you get boom, 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 in your Harley. And that's what people who go and buy a 48, they want it to sound like. But the engine is not meant or designed or ever intended to sound like that. They tick over faster, smoother, lighter. They're a bit more feisty. We all know you make any engine a bit lighter and it gets a little bit feistier and it gets a little bit less smooth and cruisy, it becomes a little bit more aggressive and that's what seems to be a confusion that's happening. Now, whiz forward to 2012, we find that the Harley Sportster engine today is, is manufactured to tick over at about 1150 revs. I, I'm not exact on that, you can look it up, I think it's about 1150 and that's quite a high tick over. A fuel injection Harley Davidson on a cold morning, a fuel injection Sportster, you fire it up, you come out, you can put your suit on, you can put a rain suit over the top of it, jump on your bike, thumb the starter and ride away. Job done. No warming it up, no getting oily. This is the modern bike of today and this is what the modern buyer wants. It's what Willie G is answering. He's giving every man a Harley Davidson. They get the image, but they don't have all the grief. Well, you can't make the adjustments. If you want a bike that's plug and play and does everything it should do, you have to get what you're given and you can't adjust it. And there's a reason why not only you can't, but you absolutely should not. Now the modern Sportster engine ticks over at that 1100 revs. Those old bikes that we reminisce about, the knucklehead, the panhead, even early shovelheads in the 70s, they would tick over at about 850-900. Ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum. Sounds fantastic on tick over, but a modern engine, you tick over at that speed, it will lose oil pressure. They're not, their oil pumps are not designed to pump oil sufficiently at that tick over level. It's too low. They're, they're starving the engine of oil, they'll start overheating. And remember, we sit on tick over when we're standing still. All air-cooled Harleys, when they're standing still, are at their most vulnerable from overheating because there's no air passing the fins on the block, so they just sit there and slowly cook. So effectively, they're getting hotter and hotter. They're getting starved of oil because they're ticking over too slow. And the 2000, 2002, 2003 engines that are carburetted, yeah, you can turn those carbs down so they tick over nice, they sound like an old engine, but you are doing internal damage, believe me. Some people will tell you, oh no, it's fine, I've done it with mine, and it's great, and it's always been fine. Let's pull your engine apart, I'll show you the scratch marks inside it, because all the bearings will get scored up, the cams will get scored up, and you'll just, you'll wear your engine out quicker. The fuel injected motors, you can't adjust them. The tick over on a fuel injected Harley Davidson is set in the ECU, the electronic control unit, a little black box, and it's set. You can go to the dealer, and yes, they can remap it and reflash it on the computer and they can adjust it so it ticks over, but I'm not joking. They can reduce it, but about 30 to 50 revs, you hardly notice it. And it's not for any reason, it's actually the adjustments for another reason, it's for fitness stage one and so on, so you get a little bit lower tick over when it's hot weather, blah, blah, blah. But it's not for sound, it's not for image, and people don't want them to tick over 50 revs less, they want them to tick over two or 300 revs a minute less, and that's just damaging, it's not doing it any good. Now here's the warning, you can buy a little gizmo, and I've seen them, they're from Spain, they're a little piggyback electric box that you plug in, piggyback on your ECU, it fools the ECU into thinking it's ticking over faster than it is, so effectively the ECU then thinks, hey, I'm, I'm ticking over too fast, so I'll roll it back. Start your bike up on a cold morning. It, it goes down through three stages, you'll see that. Your fuel injected Harley of today, when it's cold, fire it up because it's about 1500. It's ticking over fast, 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 and then you'll hear it just drop as it warms up. It'll drop on its own, it's, it's, it's all controlled by the computer. 
and then gradually when it's fully up to working temperature it will drop to about 1100 and that should tick over and you can because it does that you can thumb the start button right away in the snow and it will perform that's how it's meant to work it's a modern bike wearing an old image that's what a modern Harley is but people can't do the things to it that they want to do you go put in that little gizmo on your bike and you t stick your sportster down to 800 revs it'll sound great ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ba -bum, ticking over like an old knucklehead but you are internally destroying your motor and doing permanent damage you will trash your warranty and rightly so too because the bike's not designed to work that way you're fitting something very dangerous they're not something you can buy in the modern western world. I think the only place I've seen a company selling them is Spain. I wouldn't even want to look them up. I wouldn't even suggest you do. If you want your Harley to tick over slower, I'm afraid it ain't going to happen. It doesn't work. You can put a nice set of pipes on it. Uh, you can run it with an open air filter, you, or a free flow air filter, put a stage two on it. You can make it tick over as smoothly as possible. But I'm afraid if you want a Harley that ticks over 800 reps, you've got to buy one that was designed to it, which would be a vintage Harley and those are a world of work you really need to know your stuff to live with one of those things and keep it on the road and these questions are coming from new riders people are just getting into new bikes and new Harleys so waffle waffle I've trapped on long enough that's the point this business is slowing down your tick over you can't do it these engines are too light they won't roll over they don't have a big heavy crank that rolls along and allows them to lollop along and the oil pumps are not designed to pump oil at 800, 900 revs. They need that tick over up to about 1100 and, or whatever it should be. And then they'll pump enough oil. Think of a hose pipe trickling water out. If you put your thumb on the end, that's your oil pressure. Take your thumb off and it trickles down here. You've reduced that flow and you're not getting that oil flow up to your engine. That's where you cause the internal problem. So there you go. That hopefully answers it. Uh, stop asking, stop even wanting to reduce the tick over on a modern Harley because truly it's a bad move. It will destroy your engine internally over a long time. What will happen is a year or three down the line, if you're going to keep it, uh, you will find that that engine's got cam scores, it's got bearings that are noisy and it will just be a clattery old engine and you'll find colossal repair bills, you really will, all for the sake of a little bit of sound and that truly is a waste of time. So there you go. Thanks for tuning in to The Voice Garage. I know this has been a lot of waffle this time. I'm back on the trailer project shortly. Uh, I appreciate all of your comments. The questions I will always answer if I can, as with here. Take it easy, ride safe, and I will see you next time.